click subscribe, click the thumbs up on our messages, click the little bell. Get your friends saved, get your family saved. This is week number four as I talk more about spiritual warfare and authority. And we've been learning a lot about authority, that exousia power. And today my message is entitled, The Finger of God. And what we've been finding out and what we've learned historically in this ministry is that Christians are supposed to live in two dimensions. We are obviously living in the natural dimension of this world, but we're also instructed that we're to live in a supernatural dimension, which is a dimension that other people don't get to live in, at least the general public doesn't get to live in. And we're supposed to live in the, this spiritual realm this, with spiritual authority for good and not for evil. And this is where maybe we'll look at some things here today that there's too much occult going on in the world today. It's involved in movies. You may not recognize it. It's involved in books, popular things. Scooby-Doo, when I was a boy, that, that to this day is a very demonic cartoon. If you've ever watched the cartoon in, 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 or have watched it since you've heard me teach on this, you know that there's a lot of demonic warfare going on within uh, many of the Scooby-Doo half-hour programs. Then you got things today like Harry Potter and other things. Then you have the supernatural entering into so many movies. It's not just you have a superhero, but you have a superhero with clearly demonic authority. And it's idolized and it's even glamorized by Hollywood. And then what Christians do and say, well, it's just, it's just a movie of entertainment. And we don't recognize that there's really no halfway. We either serve God all the way or we serve Satan all the way or we have certain things in our home that are clearly not of God that we need to get rid of. And I want you to be thinking about some of those things here this morning. So there are Christians that have allowed the glamorization of the occult and of witchcraft and of the supernatural realm, demonic realm, into their homes and not recognized it. Some of, some of you recognize and haven't done anything. Some of you haven't recognized it because you haven't seen it pointed out to you and, and all you wanted God to do is just simply tell me what I need to do so I can fix it. And my personality is like that. I, you know, I said, God, I'm, I don't, I'm not telling you I'm going to be perfect at any future time, but if you show me what I need to change, I'll make changes as immediately as I can. And there have been many times where I, God will reveal something to me and I'll hop up and the next thing I know there's a movie or two, a DVD or two in the garbage. Kathy will say, well, uh, what's, uh, what did you do that for? And I'll explain it to her. This is what God revealed to me and this is what I saw in the DVD and that has no place in our house. Can I hear an amen? amen. I mean, this is something that we need to do. We need to be cleansing our thoughts, our minds, and our possessions from time to time. We need to go through and take things out of the, our ownership and not give them away or, or sell them at a, at a, you know, a garage sale or give them to, uh, you know, give them to our neighbor. We're to destroy them. We're to destroy them as if they were an idol of the land. We're to crush them. We're to pulverize them. We're to burn them. We're not to uh, put them back into circulation for someone else to take and be deceived by. Amen? Let's go over to uh, Matthew chapter 12 in our Bibles here this morning, Matthew chapter 12. And I'm going to open up in prayer. Dear Father Yahweh Elohim, I invoke your name over this message and over the service here today that power goes forth, that the presence of, of the Holy Spirit goes forth out of this pulpit, out of my mouth. And that, Father God, your people here and your, those that are watching and watching us on television are freed from the occult, are freed from demonic uh, authorities, are freed from things that they don't, they know something's wrong, but they don't know what it is. They, they haven't been able to pinpoint it. And Father God, I thank you for that now in Jesus' name. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that accuses me in judgment, I will condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their vindication is from me, saith Yahweh of hosts. And so my vindication comes from God Almighty. 
And I thank you for that now. And I thank you for that protection as I minister this message to your people here today. Matthew chapter 12, and starting in verse 22. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus, and he healed him so that the mute man spoke and saw. What a great miracle. I want to stop and point out that many things that Jesus did uh, had been seen already under the Old Covenant. There was healing uh, was allowed under the Old Covenant. There was many miracles that were allowed under the Old Covenant. Elijah had many miracles happen to him. Uh, Elisha had many miracles happen to him. Jeremiah and, and, and all the prophets had, uh, to a certain extent, had miracles happening in their lives from time to time. Even King Saul, rebellious as he was, came into the, came into the presence of the prophets and he, he began began to prophesy as one of the prophets. And so he was even being called as the, out the question, is Saul now known uh, amongst the prophets? So we've seen prophecy. We've seen different moves of God under the old covenant. But one of the things that we have never seen under the old covenant that I can establish is this, that we never saw demons cast out. Now, Jesus said, then uh, he goes and we're going to read it in a moment. He says, well, then by who do your sons cast them out? And we know that over in the book of Acts, there was a seven sons of a seven, which actually is, I think, a wrong interpretation of the word seven from the Hebrew. So the skeva, well, however they were, they were exorcists and they were more or less using satanic power to kind of make people think that they were being healed even when they weren't being healed or casting out demons when really demons weren't really leaving. Maybe there was an exchange of demons because we know that Satan will not cast out Satan, but they really weren't acting in the full power because when they went in to cast out a demon out of a man, they ran out of the house naked. They were beat up and badly bruised. And so they really didn't have that, that authority over demons like, like many had thought that they had. But the true authority is now operating in Jesus. And look at this again, verse 22. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus and he healed him so that the mute man spoke and saw. Verse 23, and all the crowds were amazed and were saying, this man cannot be the son of David, can he? In other words, uh, how can this be? We, we don't understand this process. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, this man cast out demons only by Beelzebul, the ruler of demons. Now, if you have a King James, it'll say Beelzebub. But the correct interpretation here is Beelzebul because it was a way of insulting the name of a god, Beelzebub. And instead of saying the Lord of Baal, it was saying the Lord of the flies by changing just one little letter in the Hebrew. So the, the, the Jews were mocking the concept of Beelzebub and, and really bring his establishment down, which was probably a pretty good thing to do. But the thing that they were doing wrong is they were accusing Jesus of casting out demons by the use of demonic authority. That was evil. Verse 25. And knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And any city or house divided against itself will not stand. What does Satan want to do in this country? Divide people. I, I, I grew up, when I grew up in the 60s and the 70s, now I, just a little background, you know, I used to be a hippie. I used to be a little on the crazy side. When I was in the military, I experimented with a lot of things, you know, drugs particular. But one of the things I recognized when I joined the military, I was from Connecticut, and I joined the military, I got to see racism up close that I had never seen before. And I didn't understand it. I was from the North. When we talk about racism today, we have to understand that this is really two countries that have been knit together, I believe, by the Spirit of God. But the enemy wants to keep keep that apart. And instead now what we see happening in this country, we see things that where the devil is trying to divide this country, then the devil tries to divide the church, and then the devil tries to divide husband from wife, children from parents. So division is a work of the devil. Amen. And I want to tell you that as when I was 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, I went to places in the South that if I talked about it today, people would say, well, you're not allowed to do that. But I was allowed back then, and I was allowed by all my black buddies in my flight and in, 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 the, in the different organizations I was in to go with them 
as an invited white man to be in places that I probably wouldn't be allowed in today. Because racism wasn't as bad as you think it was back some 50 years ago. I'm telling you a fact. And I didn't have any problem with it. And I wasn't worried either because I came in as a white man. People saw me walk in and they saw a group of guys with me. They were all black. We were all military. They said, this is our boy. We're going to take care of him. Everyone else keep away. And that's the truth. And yet the devil wants to divide. The devil doesn't divide himself. The devil divides righteousness, but he doesn't allow division within his own ranks. If you want to leave him, he'll try to kill you. Which he does. He doesn't allow the prisoners to go free. He doesn't let them return home either. And so the enemy is dividing us. And anytime you see division in a church, unless it's godly division, unless it's righteousness being called up and demonic things being called out and being pushed out. We've done that here. That's what not division. That's not ungodly division. That's righteous division. Amen? Yeah. When you throw stuff out of your house, isn't that righteous division? Yeah. When you throw the garbage out, isn't that righteous division? And when a church expels unrighteousness, isn't that righteous division? That's righteousness in operation. Yeah. Amen. Verse 25 again. And knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And any city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? In other words, Satan doesn't leave by his own authority, nor is he willing to leave by his own authority. He, he doesn't go unless you make him go. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? He doesn't go unless you make him go. So we have, an, we have a responsibility to use our authority. And we've been finding out that authority in the Greek, the Greek word for authority is exousia, exousia. And exousia is the power and the dimensions of power that are not natural. And we need to be using that authority and it comes easily. Here's one of the problems with Christian, most Christians today. And I, I can tell you for a long time I was in this group, so I can tell you that it exists. We are more educated by horror movies by, uh, of exorcisms and by, of demons. And we have, as, as Christians say, such a fear of casting out devils because we have learned from Hollywood, not from our Bibles. If you learn from your Bible, you're going to find out that the 70 came back and they rejoiced because even demons were subject to the name of Jesus and they were shocked at that. Amen. But if we go and you look at Hollywood, you got a priest coming into a room and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. For those of you that were misfortunate enough to see the movies that I saw back in the 70s. And you think, wow, man, the devil's got a lot of power. He doesn't have a lot of power. He has been stripped of his weapons. He has all of his armor has been taken off. We're looking at a... <laughs> We're looking at a crab without a shell. Come on. Come on. And all you need to do there, Christian, is go over there and destroy him. There's no protection on him any longer. But we don't use our authority because we're afraid of it because we have been educated more by Hollywood than we have by the Word of God. Let's keep reading. If I buy Beelzebul... Cast out demons, by who do your sons cast them out? For this reason, they will be your judges. In other words, these Jewish exorcists that went around, but they didn't really have the authority of exorcism. They had what looked like authority, but it was sleight of hand. They were re really, really uh, charlatans looking to make money. Now, verse 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you, or the presence of what's happening in heaven is now on earth. Right? What do we pray in the Our Father? Give us this day our daily bread and bring things that are in heaven down on earth. On earth. In heaven, on earth. Your will be on earth as it is in heaven. And so when we think about those things, how can we pray the Our Father and not recognize that Jesus is saying in, a, in every part of that prayer, 
that we're supposed to have authority and, 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 and in the earth to do and change things in our environment, Amen. in our geography, in our neighborhood, in our church. Amen. Amen. Verse 28, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? So what we do, instead of us being bound, instead of us being kept from doing what we want to do, sickness and disease is a binding of your authority. If, you're, if you get sick, your authority has been bound because you are limited because of that sickness and disease. But I know over in Psalm 92, it says that the righteous man shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a, a tree in Lebanon, planted in the house of Yahweh. He shall still yield fruit in old age. He shall be full of sap and very green. Why? To declare that Yahweh is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. Amen. And you have to take these things seriously. But this is the way that we know that we have permission to have that kind of a life. Whenever you get sick, whenever something's happened to you, whenever there is a lack in your life financially, maybe a lack of attention, maybe a lack of love, whatever it might be, whatever thing that you're dealing with right now, that is a binding of the enemy and those things can be cast down. You can cast down the spirit of loneliness. You can cast down the spirit of suicide. You can cast down the spirit of being misunderstood. You can cast down the spirit of friendlessness. You can cast down the spirit of wrong associations. You can cast those off of your kids. Those, that's a real good thing to do. Amen. So we've discovered so far that the devil is a liar. He's a rebel. He's been a rebel since the beginning. And any time that we see rebellion in the church, any time we see rebellion in ourselves personally, any time we see rebellion in our home, understand it is not of God. It is of the devil. Amen. Rebellion is of the devil. Now, rebellion can go two different directions. Rebellion can go from the bottom up towards righteousness to attack that righteousness to divide it or destroy it. But rebellion can also come from the top down. You can have a rebel leader and you can have a rebel leader attacking the righteousness of those living in the earth. And we read last Sunday that when the wicked are in leadership, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in leadership, the people rejoice. Amen. So it can go either direction. Amen. So Jesus knew of healing but the Jews had never seen demons being cast out before. So this is a brand new thing. And one of the things that Jesus wants us to know is not only does he cast out demons, and he wants us to cast out demons, and we've been instructed to do so, but we have no business messing with the occult at all. That means if we have occultic pictures in our house, we get rid of them. So while I got, a, I got a picture of Buddha in my house, it's just because I'm just a, I'm a world traveler, Pastor. You got to understand, no, you have a picture of a false god in your house. And there are demons bef behind that false god. Demons that actually make it seem like it's appropriate to worship that thing or at least have it around. You need to take that off your wall. You need to get rid of that statue and you don't give it away to charity. You take it outside and you destroy it with a sledgehammer. Amen. Amen. You turn it to powder. You do what you need to do and you bring honor to God when you do that. And God honors you in return when you begin to notice these things in your home that don't belong there. Same thing with native communities. We've got a lot of native communities in Wisconsin. I've preached in 30 different reservations here in the United States over the last 35 years. I've seen many natives that are straight laced and they're up and they're front and they don't have anything to do with the occult of, of within their tribes. Now I've seen other preachers convince, try to convince me that they can have the occult and they can have Christianity at the same time. And there is no mixing of darkness and light. The Apostle Paul said, you're not supposed to mix those two. You're supposed to get rid of it completely and you can live amongst it, but you don't have to be part of it. Amen. So we do the same things in our own communities. 
And we have to be militant about this because if we are not, we invite in demonic attack and demonic warfare and we don't know where it came from. And we go to God, God, how did this happen to me? I was ministering to a man. He died. He died young. And he came. He said, Pastor, I, my body's all messed up and, I, I, and I, the devil's just been attacking my body. I said, the devil hasn't been attacking your body. You drink two cases of Mountain Dew a day. Your problem isn't the devil. Your problem is your diet. Now, the devil may be keeping you addicted to that stuff, but your, your body isn't being attacked by the devil. It's your mind being attacked by the devil. And some people don't want to let go of those things. So not only do we have the nine gifts of the spirit, but we have the power of the spirit and operation in our life. Let's go over to Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, starting in verse one. Now, after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them in pairs ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going to come. Now, if you ever want to go and pray for somebody, don't go by yourself, particularly if it's new territory for you or if you're not used to doing it. Take a prayer warrior with you. Take someone who's on equal footing with you or close to equal footing with you and go in the power of God. Right. One can be overcome, but two can resist. Amen. And by the way, there's power in the prayer, collective prayer of the saints. And he was saying to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go, behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. All right. There's several things going on there. You're not just going out as lambs in the midst of wolves, naturally speaking although that's going on, but you're going out as innocent lambs, spiritually speaking, in the midst of demonic authorities and demonic powers. In Israel, up until Jesus' day, and even afterwards, but up until Jesus' day, Israel kept on falling back into sin. They would worship the Baals, they would uh, worship Molech, they would do absolutely awful things. They would murder their children for the sake of, of a false God. Execute them. And all kinds of demonic authority and power was being exercised in Israel, which is why God would say, I mean, I, mean, I, I called you my wife, Israel, but now, you're, now I'm seeking a certificate of divorce because you don't know me. You say that you know me, but you don't know me. You don't love me. And Hosea was one of them where you read the book of Hosea and you find out that he was going to take a prostitute and marry her and have children so that he could understand as a prophet what God goes through when we allow the occult in our home and think it's entertain okay entertainment as a Christian. For anyone that's been through divorce, whether you were at fault, the other person, whoever, however, however it works out, you know, there's a lot of pain in divorce. There's a lot of pain with a broken relationship. There's a lot of pain going on in that thing. And what God wanted Hosea and wants us to understand through that book is this, that when we bring the occult willingly into our house, when we don't clean our cupboards of things that don't belong there, what we willingly do is we tell God, oh, well, I can be married to you, but I'm going to have some other lovers. I'm going to have this occultic lover over here, this witchcraft lover. I'm going to keep continue to read my horoscopes. You know, many women's magazines still have horoscopes in them to this day. And many of you know it. And you turn there. Newspaper has horoscopes every Sunday, probably every day now for all I know. And yet we go to these things, we turn to these things, say, well, God can't see that there's anything really wrong with that. When you say that, you diminish God's honor. And you say, I am going to learn from other sources about my future rather than the word of God and what God speaks to me. See, the, the, when, when Israel was doing the right thing, Israel would come up and say, uh, you know, listen to the prophets and succeed. Obey your prophets, believe your prophets and succeed. Why? Prophets are for the righteous, not for the unrighteous, not necessarily. So when we become good Christians operating in the power and the authority God wants us to be operating in, we know how to search out the proper prophets. By the way, the world is full of false prophets right now. Yeah. 
And I'm finally seeing other ministries come on board with denouncing these false online prophets. They're false prophets. 170,000 viewers in one week. And yet nothing they say is true. It could be worded any other. It could be worded a multitude of ways and they're still not hearing from God. Amen. Amen. Let's keep reading. Uh, let's jump down to verse 8. In whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat what is set before you and heal those uh, in it who are sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. In other words, the operation, the full operation of the kingdom of God in heaven is now operating here on earth. Verse 10. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say... Even the dust of your city, which clings to our feet, we will wipe off and protest against you. Yet be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come near. All right. So there are people resisting entire geographies that resist the power of God, resist Christianity. Do you know any cities just in America that are seem to be... <laughs> more controlled by demonic authorities, have more hate, have more crime, have more murder than others. Do you, do you know of certain cities that uh, have, have completely thrust God out? At least it looks like that on the surface. That means you have cities, entire cities that don't want people and evangelists to step off the plane, to enter, to drive into their city to preach because they know, because they represent, those authorities represent demonic authorities. They don't want to lose their territory because taking territory from Satan is actually quite easy. It's not hard. Right. Let's keep reading. I say to you, it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Then jump down now to verse 16. The one who listens to you listens to me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects the one who sent me, or the fa our Father in heaven. Verse 17, and the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus. In the name, if you like to, in the Hebrew, in the name of Yeshua or in the name of salvation. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So if you want a key to unlock the supernatural, which doesn't take you doing cartwheels, you don't have to have long fast, you don't have to have all kinds of things lined up, you don't have to be a perfect Christian. You don't wait for a day where you're not yelling at your cat and, and being mad at your goldfish. It's the power is there every day. Amen. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning or losing territory. Behold, verse 19, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. It's interesting that he said these things. Serpents and scorpions are used in the Old Covenant for the dangers of men and the dangers of demons. Think about this. Satan appeared as a serpent in the Garden of Eden, a nakash. We know that serpents and scorpions were in the desert. At different times, Israel was plagued with serpents and scorpions biting them. We know that in the book of Revelation in chapter 9, that's, that scorpions are going to be released from the abyss over all the earth in the seven-year tribulation, and people are going to be stung by these things that appear as scorpions. And they're going, to, they're going to be stung for five months, and they're not going to be able to die. And it's used as a weapon against human beings. But see, the devil uses his demons as weapons against the church and against Christians. And we're to bind up those principalities and those powers. Let's read this again. Behold, I give you authority or exousia to tread, right? Treading means to drive over, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So his discussion clearly here is about the demonic realm over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Well, if nothing will injure you, then some of those movies out there, those horrific movies that have been playing since the 60s and the 70s, 
glorifying the occult, giving more honor to the devil than is scripturally feasible. And in the end, Satan's already defeated. He's a defeated foe. He's going to be locked up for a thousand years, released for a little time, and then thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. Eternity. That's his future. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on. You know what treading does? Treading's not backing up, it's moving ahead. Amen. You've got to train a horse to back up. You've got to train a dog to back up. You even got to put it in reverse in your car to back up. Your car is designed to move forward, your feet are designed to move forward. Everything in life is supposed to move forward. You're supposed to take back territory that you lost a long time ago Amen. or maybe never had. Amen. Amen. It's interesting that these authorities, and one of them in over in Revelation chapter 9, there's a king over them. The king in the book of Revelation is Abaddon. And literally in the Hebrew, it's, it's a Hebrew explanation. And you go to the Hebrew and you find out it means to lose oneself. But he's a leader over all these scorpions. And the definition is to lose oneself or to be a destroyer. But I find it fascinating that the devils want you to lose yourself. If you're given over to excesses in different areas, if you're in bondage in different areas, you can lose yourself. Lose control of yourself. So we have authority by the Holy Spirit over Satan, the devil, and all of his stingers. Which lines right up with Ephesians chapter 6, that we extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Amen. They come in, the Scud missile comes in, we lift up our shield of faith, right? Any missile that's coming at us, so we're not to be afraid of sudden fear. We're not to fear sudden fear. We're to bind up that fear in the name of Jesus. We're to say, I have complete trust in Yahweh God. I, my soul, the soul trust in Yahweh. My, David said, my soul trust in Yahweh. No matter what he sees with his eyes. Amen. So now we have this authority. Now let's go over to chapter 11 of Luke, chapter 11. And I'm going to start reading in verse 20. But if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are undisturbed. But when someone stronger, then he attacks him and overpowers him. He takes away from him all of his armor on which he had relied and distributes his plunder. So what do we know? We know that we have authority over Satan. We have authority through the name of Jesus. That's number one. Number two, Jesus here is calling that spiritual authority the finger of God. Now, I find that fascinating. I find it very fascinating. So I went and tried to find the first time that it was ever used. And the first time the finger of God was ever used was over in Exodus chapter 31. And the ten plagues were coming over the land of Egypt, and the plagues are being released through Moses and Aaron. Aaron was doing the work that Moses was telling him to do, as, and Aaron became the high priest. And so this one plague of the gnats was released over all the land, and they were a type of gnat that was s small enough to just barely be seen, but would get in your eyes and in your nose and in your ears and under your skin. They would open up sores on your skin, and these gnats were terrible. And it was such a great plague that the magicians that were working for Pharaoh said this. They said they acknowledged that the plague was the finger of Elohim, was the finger of God. In other words, God's authority and his power. You know, in this, what is it, in the Sistine Chapel? We were talking about this this morning. What is it, in the Sistine Chapel? They got Michelangelo's, right? And what is one of the things we see in that picture in the Sistine Chapel? We see the finger of God. And I never put it together until now. That the finger, all we need is God's finger. I don't need any other power. I don't need his whole body. I don't need his toes or his whole hand. Even though the hand is good, right? The right hand of God upholds us. But even the finger of God, which is only part of the hand, is enough power to cast out Satan. Just the finger of God. 
How do I know that's true? Because it was the finger of God that wrote on the two stone tablets, the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue. And then when Moses busted those, he had to cut up two more stone tablets. But God wrote on it with his finger, Scripture says, a second time. Amen. With the finger of God. You didn't know it came from the right hand because the right hand is the right hand of power. So the finger of God. So the finger of God, when we raise our hand and we declare things, we can say our finger is God's finger and we can declare to things. I command that mountain to move out of my way in the name of Jesus. I bind up the demons off of my neighbor in the name of Jesus. We did that when we first began to understand only a tiny bit of Christianity. I mean, I was barely, barely saved. We were living in the state of Maine and we had neighbors that were practicing witches and had historically practiced witchcraft. They live across the street from us in the middle of nowhere. So we didn't have very far to run before we had to bump into them. They watched us, we watched them. And one day I went out of my house, I was mad. And we're living in the wilderness in Maine. And I said, in the name of Jesus, and I just started shouting across the street at that house. All the problems we had going on, accusations, cops showing up at our house at odd, strange times, false accusations of all kinds ended. Everything ended. The warfare ended. You got some crazy neighbors, you go out and you shout in the middle of the day if you want. Or hide behind your your, your glass in your living room and shout at him. Say, in the name of Jesus, I bind you foul demons over there at that house. I bind the activity going on. And by the way, demonic activity isn't always what looks like witchcraft. Satan doesn't put on a couple horns and, and leave in the morning and go, I'm going to show you everyone that works for me. Amen. Witchcraft has all kinds of forms. There's all kinds of weirdness and, and weird occult activity going on. And some people don't even know they're involved in it. They don't know their kids are involved in it. They don't know why their kids are acting demon possessed. They don't know why their kids are doing strange things or being rebellious. All rebellion is of the devil. Amen. When it's rebellion against righteous authority and authority that's been set up, all rebellion. Do you know the, the kind of rebellion that's going to go on during the millennial reign? Any rebellion, it says that Jesus is going to rule with a rod of iron. You know what ruling with a rod of iron is? It means beating you up if you don't follow the rules with a piece of steel, a piece of iron. Right? He's going to rule. He's not going to use steel, but the concept is there. And we're to rule our homes that way. We're to rule our environments that way. We're to rule our neighborhood that way. Jesus said, over all the power of the enemy, you have got nothing to fear. The only fear you should have is remaining as you are and letting things keep binding you up and tripping you up. Sometimes we've accepted things into our life through confession. Some things have come in, into our life through hereditary discussions. We think it's in our chromosomes, but it's really in, in the confession of the people before us. Of our grandfathers and great-grandfathers and grandmothers before us. It might be occultic practices, but it might be just confession. It might be, it might be a bad practice of a kind, a sexual practice of a kind. It could be the way that we cheated somebody else and our, our forefathers did something bad to somebody else. And these demons can enter in and all of a sudden now, before you know it, we're dealing with demonic warfare and we don't know where it's coming from. Even the priests were to take their finger and they were to take the blood of the bull and they were to sprinkle just their finger and they were to t dip it in the bull's blood and sprinkle the altar. And then they were to go out to the front of the sanctuary when it was a tent sanctuary and dip their finger in it and to sprinkle the doorway of the sanctuary. Just a little bit of the blood, not all the bull's blood, just a little bit of the sacrifice, just in fact, not even a fingerful, a sprinkle of blood was enough to sanctify the sanctuary, the doors of the sanctuary, the altar of the sanctuary, and to make it holy, Amen. to consecrate it. Amen. So, what does this denote? The finger of God. It denotes, number one, authority. 
Number two, power. Number three, cleansing. And number four, the smallest stroke of the power of God is enough to do great things. The smallest stroke of the power of God. All right? So can, we, can we bring this forward? Let's bring it out of the Bible to modern day. All you have to do is point and click. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Unless something changes, that should last for 10 years. All you need to do is point and click. All you need to do is point to that thing and say what you need to say. Select the right words using the name of Jesus. And there's virtually no words that... I haven't heard people really be too off, and historically speaking, in, in four decades, when they're using the name of Jesus to take authority over. Let's go over to John chapter 14, John 14, verse 12. Jesus is speaking. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Right. So whatever Jesus did, we can do. Right. I, you know, I've had some people, you know, get a little bit crazy with this and go, Pastor, I'm going to walk on the water. Well, first, why don't you walk across your living room, turn off that satanic movie and turn and preach to your kids before you try to walk on water. Why don't you know, for you? That's walking on water. Some people can't do that. Some people can't touch the TV in their home. They'd be afraid of insulting their babies. Oh, but my child needs to watch this. It really settles them down. Really? Settles them down for how long? And what are they learning through those programs? What are they learning? Say, Pastor, you're attacking a lot of stuff. Yeah, because the occult has been so mixed into our environment, we have grown to accept it, not knowing we've allowed the occult into our house. And when you allow the occult into your house, I'm sorry to tell you, having a little oil at the door isn't going to stop demons that are following those things in. If you willingly bring it in, then they willingly will come. You've got to get that stuff out of your house. And you have to ask God, reveal to me what's going on, because I don't understand the, the problems that I'm having. So we just point and click at the powers of darkness. The works that I do, you will do also. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. And the problem I have with this is the modern day envisioning of putting on the armor, how hard it is and it's heavy. And people I've heard describe it as the armor that little boy David was trying to put on to fight Goliath. He ended up in the end not wearing that armor, Saul's armor. Our struggle is not, verse 12, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day, having done everything to stand firm, stand firm. Right? So we take up the full armor of God and we read the different things here. Have girded your loins with truth. That means you need to hear the truth all the time about the Word of God. If you're not hearing the truth about the Word of God, which is happening all over America and Canada. But America, I mean, this is where we live. All over America, people are no longer hearing the truth. They're not hearing the truth. Churches are, homosexual churches are filling up. It's okay for those same churches to say, well, toxic masculinity is bad. So all you men that are masculine and toxic masculinity, we need to get rid of because we'll create a, we'll create a better environment for ourselves. But if you women want to be toxic and masculine at the same time, oh, we're going we're gonna to clap that. We're going we're gonna to let that come in. In fact, all you toxic masculine women, come sit right down in front. And we've become twisted in our thinking about what's allowable and what's not allowable. And then we, then we hear that oh, we're supposed to just love one another. Can't we just love one another? Yeah, we can. So well, you're just being judgmental. No, we're being truthful. And if truthful is judging what you're practicing or what you are endorsing, then you have been warned by God. Amen. Make no mistake about it. 
Neither the effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor dogs, nor murderers, nor liars shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Make no mistake about it. Let no one be fooled. Amen. Let's keep reading. Verse 15, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, make sure that you're preaching the gospel at all times or supporting it. In addition to that, taking up the shield of faith with which you'll be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one or all the flaming missiles of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. You can say that's the finger of God, which is the word of God. And with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. These are the things we need to be operating in. Amen. 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 So it's his, it's his finger of power who answers. Amen. So let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For those that are accepting this message today, I just heard the Holy Spirit prophesy to me to tell you, God is well pleased with you accepting this message and accepting this generous word of power. For those whose hearts are receiving this with joy, God is well pleased with you. Well pleased. Right? Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Look at all those, those war weapons there. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Our weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful. It is the finger of God by these things that we know that we can do. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 18, starting in verse 18. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. In other words, it'll be happening at the same time. And whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. How? By his finger. For wherever two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. So when we gather just for a prayer, this is why husbands and wives need to be in agreement when they're praying. You can't say, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't want that. I don't believe that. You've got to stop that. If, if your wife wants to believe for a free new house paid for in cash, then if you can't be in agreement, then muzzle yourself. Amen. Come on. Muzzle yourself. I am here to tell you that not being in an agreement means if you get it at all, at best, you might, might only get halfway there. Well, getting the house half paid for is pretty good, but walking and being debt free, that's really good. Amen. Amen. Whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For two or three have gathered together in my name. I am there in their midst. I love to pray uh, with other people. I just, I just love to pray with other people. There's power in agreement. There's power and protection in agreement. Let's go over to Mark chapter uh, 16. Mark 16, verse 17. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, there it is again, his name. In my name, they will cast out demons. How? By the finger of God, they will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them or hurt them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. By the way, having that kind of a prayer with water qualities in certain big cities, that's a good prayer to believe for. Amen. We live in a pretty clean area in this, this part of the country, but, you know, I've traveled to some places where the water is a shock. Finally, we're going to go over to 2 Chronicles 20. 2 Chronicles 20, 20. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said... Listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in Yahweh your God, and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. 
Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Why don't we look at our sheet and we'll just read it out loud together. And Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against me will prosper. Everyone read it with me out loud. No weapon that is formed against me will prosper. And every tongue that accuses me in judgment, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh and their vindication is from me, declares Yahweh. I have the favor of God and I am highly favored. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have the gifts of the Holy Spirit in full operation in my life. I'm anointed and filled with the full power of God. I'm filled with all wisdom and knowledge. The money is already there for my home, my church, where I work, for travel and phones and cars and debt-free living, vacations and planes, money for the needy and for Kenya. I shall increase more and more. I am debt-free, my business is debt-free, and my church is debt-free. My family and my name have honor. My enemies shall flee and fall before me because of me and because of your mighty hand. I have more than enough to carry out God's plan for my life. The enemy is returning sevenfold what has been stolen from us. We command Satan to return sevenfold what has been stolen from me in Yeshua's name. I have a hundredfold return on all my gifts and work. I receive 400 years of back wages. That takes some explaining if you've never heard that before. We have favor in all areas of our life. Favor with our communities of the Dells area, Reedsburg, Baraboo, Lake Delton, and Madison, with Milwaukee, the governor of Wisconsin, favor with the whole Midwest, our suppliers, our church members, my co-workers, our banks, and my family members. With long life, God satisfies us and lets us behold his salvation. The Lord fills us and gives us good things. I am not worried about tomorrow. I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I shall lend and not borrow. I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I am healthy and whole. My body is strong and my mind is increasing. I will walk closely to God all the days of my life and all of our children. As for me and my house, we shall serve Yahweh. Yahweh gives me good things so that my youth is renewed as the eagles. Yahweh calls me friend. If God is for me, who can be against me? Amen. Give the Lord a shout here this morning. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to pray. I bind up the spirit of wickedness off of people here that have been had family curses placed on them through what their fathers and their mothers and their grandparents did before them. I break off uh, spirits of wickedness right now in Jesus cruelty I, I, I just the Holy Spirit show me a spirit of cruelty that comes out even when you around your animals I break off that spirit of cruelty right now in the name of Jesus I bind it and send it out in the dry places I bind up the spirit of cruelty towards children right now in the name of Jesus and to our offspring in the name of Jesus and I break the power of that thing off of, I command those demons to flee who's ever dealing with that uh, in the presence of my hearing right now in Jesus' name. I command the spirit of gnats that has come in to destroy communities. And I, the Holy Spirit speaking to me and speaking to some African communities right now. You have the spirit of gnats over you. I break the spirit of gnats off of your communities right now in Jesus' name. And we bind up those demonic powers and send them out into, into, into waste places, into desert, deserted areas never to return. And off of our land here, in Jesus' name. Remember, whatever two or more agree on anything is touching anything. So be in agreement with me, church, as these things come forward, as the Holy Spirit's releasing these things right now. I bind up the spirit of arthritis off of people here and off of people that are listening to my voice. I bind up these demonic forces of arthritis right now and claiming it's something that is a, it has to be taken in by old age. And the breaking of that mentality, I command those demons, not just one, but many demons that support arthritis, I command them bound up off of our bodies right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I bind up the spirit of the roaring of the lion that makes us in fear of going outside or makes us in fear of moving ahead. I bind up those false lions, those roaring demons, making us think that there's destruction outside of our door. I command them bound right now in Jesus' name. And I send them out in the dry places. I bind up the spirit of Lucifer, of the spirit of Nacus, of the snake, off of people here that have allowed witchcraft into their homes. I break the power of the occult off of you right now in Jesus' name. And all those listening to the sound of my voice, particularly our pastors in, in all, around, all around the world, I break the power of the occult off of you and off of your churches and off of your homes right now in Jesus' name. And we command that done. I bind up the, the spirits of sorrow. Oh, they're so sweet. They, they come in and they, the spirits of sorrow are sweet songs of, of, of demonic birds. And I bind them up right now off of people in Jesus' name. And I command the spirit of sorrow to leave everyone listening to the sound of my voice in Jesus' name. I bind up the spirit of this green fungus that's a disease and we command it bound up right now and leprosy type of things off of people right now. And this might be for our, our, our pastors in India, I, but I don't know who it's for. But the spirit of leprosy, I bind up the spirit of leprosy off of people right now. God showed to me it was green, it was a fungus and it's a spirit trying to break down people's bodies, trying to bring infection into people's homes, infecting them with demons, we command them cast out in, in Jesus' name. I bind up the spirit of Native American demonic forces and shaman and witchcraft, and I command them thrown out of not only those in this ministry, but out of those in Wisconsin. We bind up the spirit of the shaman off of the state right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing by any means shall injure us. Did you hear that? Nothing by any means shall injure us. We will tread upon the full force of the enemy and nothing by any means shall injure us. We command this the protected epicenter of revival. Father, have revival break out in our hearts and our homes and our marriages and our bodies. Have revival break out in our bodies so much so that our body is healthy. A revival in our finances that we're, we become debt free. In Jesus' name. Bind up the, the spirits of sexual sin and of pornography and of harlotry, of physical harlotry off of people here, off of those that are listening to the sound of my voice and watching on TV. We bind up those spirits off of you right now in the name of Jesus. We bind those generational curses of, of, of sexual harlotry. In Jesus' name. And cast them out into dry places. I command people are free of them right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Kathy, would you join me up here? Well, if you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ before and you've been dealing with a lot of problems in your life, the first thing is to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then you get to use his name. Praise God. And you learn how to use his name by becoming a child of God. And if you'd like to do that right now, join the rest of us here today that are going to make this faith confession once again right along with you here in our sanctuary and at home. Say, dear Jesus, dear Jesus come into my heart right now, into my heart right now. And, make me a new person, and make me a new person, a new creation. A new creation. I don't want to be, don't wanna be that, old anymore. that old person anymore. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for, dying for, for dying on the cross for me so that I don't have to die, so I don't have to die. 
for all the things that I've done wrong. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Now, if you just made that decision for Jesus Christ, we're happy for you. Write us here at David Gonzalez Ministries, P.O. Box 847, Lake Delton, Wisconsin, 52940. And I'd love to send out this free little booklet to you, Is the Bible for Real? Help you get started on your way with your walk with God. Praise God. And having Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If uh, you are watching us right now and you haven't yet become a financial partner with this ministry, God is speaking to me fresh again to you today to ask you, are there people in your family line that you want saved before the, Jesus comes to comes to meet us in the air? Or uh, are there people in your family line you want to get saved that really need it and you just want a breakthrough? Maybe one of the reasons that you haven't seen it yet, and God has told me to speak this out, so just tell you the truth, is that you haven't placed the value on the cost of a soul of your own family. You haven't placed any value on it at all. When you support our ministry, God comes back and he rewards you back for what you are doing. And he looks to your own and he looks to your prayers and he looks to who you care for, whether they hear about us or not is immaterial. Amen. But this returns back to you. Become a regular financial supporter of this ministry. Place a value on the cost of a soul that you know you want to get saved. Your parents, your children, some people that are far away from you now, they haven't been back in church in a long period of time. What is the value of that to you? It's got to be great. Amen. And when you begin to support this ministry with releasing that into the earth, God will bless you back. Amen. Amen. And of course, we'd love to see you here in our sanctuary from time to time. Make it a point to drive to the Dells on a Sunday morning or Wednesday night and be a part of our congregation. Amen. Praise God. Well, this is Pastor Dave and Kathy Gonzalez saying, Press into God. And we'll, he'll, he'll press into you. And we'll see you again here next Sunday yeah. at the mountain. Amen. Click subscribe. Click the thumbs up on our messages. Click the little bell. Get your friends saved. Get your family saved.